Games as they stand are really, really homogenous. A handful of people are sort of holding hostage this entire form. When you put tools in the hands of individual people, that's just necessarily going to vastly expand the kinds of things that we see. I think what people just want to see is just more of themselves as an option. It's a well-known fact that you know games have like a sexism problem, a racism problem, and every other problem. And the thing is that it's actually very hard to get it changed because so many people feel like these are games, nothing's wrong, and why are you treating me like the bad guy? You know, there's so much resistance. Technology and gaming platforms have always been in my life. My father owned an Atari and NES when I was younger, so I've only known life with video games. I remember uh, Super Mario 2, I always played as Peach. And I remember like playing Mortal Kombat and always wanted to play like, you know, Katana or whatever because like, it was just so rare to have girls, you know, I automatically went for them. I haven't really seen a character like myself, someone who has my gender identity. And I didn't realize that, you know, all this time, maybe I have been wanting it just once to see that happen. I started blogging on my own site personally. I was right out the gate about diversity or, or representation in games. I was very much inspired inspired by Anna Anthropy and her books on accessible game design. There are a lot of voices in game design that aren't really getting heard for a lot of reasons. I think like the only solution to that is in fact to have more people sort of speaking from the margins. I knew I wanted to start making a game that a lot of big budget and now indies would say, oh, it's just not a feasible thing to do. I felt like, you know, I talked about games so much, I might as well make one and that kind of happened. Here is my Nietzsche. This game is not so technologically advanced or complex that the typical person can't make it, but that's kind of the point. I made this game because I'm a person who does not have access to the tools and education of like a computer science degree. I was very much discouraged from going into development in that way. I meant this game to communicate something to a friend of mine, my best friend. Of, of, of like 14 years. There's a lot of things she just couldn't understand. She couldn't understand why I had such a negative outlook, why I was so anxious all the time. And I needed to make something to show her why. And as we can see in this street scene, people stare and say incredibly mean things. And I basically just pulled quotes from my life. Everything that happens in the street scene are things that have actually happened or have been said to me. Um, a man who, you know, hits on me um, and, and then reacts badly when he uh, perceives that I'm transgender. Those lines actually happened to me during a gaming conference at IndieCade. Um, I took the guy's exact words and put them in this game. I was having a conversation with Maddie, like I think a week before she actually sat down and started working on the game. And we were talking about Passage, which is a game by Jason Rohr, a game that's ostensibly about a single lifetime. I wanted to critique that because that was so simplistic. It, it was very much reminiscent to a lot of our games um, of we just go through challenges and we get to this grand ending. In, in Passage, you walk down the corridor until you die of old age. Dying of old age for you know a lot of queer and trans people is really wishful thinking. <laughs> um, I think Mainichi is more of a representation of the kind of violence, the you know, mental, emotional, and physical that queer lives are subjected to. If I was to watch this game be played anywhere, um, it would be upsetting, and maybe upsetting is a good thing. I think I think we should be upset by games. Um, I think that's a, a valid emotion to happen. It's not meant for me to feel good. It does make other people feel good um, because in a sense, this game has been some uh, of a validating. It made people like, oh, I have that experience too. I'm not alone. Different games kind of popped out of nowhere for me. I was just asked and I actually didn't realize it was the first conference like, this is his first year. There isn't a typical way to have a games conference. We were asking for calls for papers and presentations and panel um, submissions. 
but you know there's also this component of like I want to actually just show the games I want people to play the games and like sit down and and also talk to the designers like have the designers there to like get feedback to you know be part of the discussion of their work seems like there's been this kind of explosion on Twitter of people making personal twine games uh, like small personal graphical games uh, and so I think that's really been a big thing for me is like seeing other people doing this stuff I was privileged to be able to moderate a panel with Anna and uh, Maddie talking about some of the work they're doing in the personal game space in particular. The idea of a personal game isn't unique to minorities or to the queer community, but you can see why the idea of using accessible tools to tell personal stories might be attractive to those people who are now being heard for the first time. I'm less invested in bringing people into a queer game scene. What I'm more interested in seeing happen is just a progressive breaking down of the barriers to making games to the point where making a game becomes something like taking a photo or writing a poem or drawing a sketch. I'm now making a game called I Hate Curry. Basically now I get to talk about my relationship with my mother through her cooking and how a lot of what was going on in our relationship also affected my identity and struggles with my identity and maybe why things are the way they are now. People are definitely bulking at like, you know, using personal experience as a part of game design. And I think with more people coming into game design, it'll just literally help the industry grow, you know, like get out of this very narrow place that it's in right now. Like I can only imagine like the things that, you know, are possible with games that we're just not even thinking about and some random person somewhere because they're able to make a game with like twine or something will discover something we haven't even thought of and what more can we want with games right now.